Hey everybody, it's Josh. The Lord brought me out here today to the same spot that I recorded my first videos. It's been a journey of discovery for me. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. When I first was saved by God, I didn't want it to be the Christian God, at least not in the way that Christians worship him. This is not something I'm proud of. It's just something that it that was. My ego was still clinging on for dear life. The demons inside of me were still clinging on for dear life. But God had to reveal to me the truth about him. As I've told you all many times, he took away my suffering. He took away my anxiety, my fears. I didn't fear death anymore, but I didn't fear life either. The first task he had for me was to go and to study as many religions, philosophies, spiritualities, psychologies, everything I could to better understand the truth about him. Now I'd grown up, I'd felt the presence of Jesus as a young teen. So obviously he held a strong place in my heart, but I still did not even understand Jesus. I knew the stories. I knew the knowledge of the Bible, not, not perfectly or not even that much, but I still knew, you know, stories from Genesis, stories from Moses, stories from, from the New Testament. But there was still so much I did not know. So I didn't think that I, I knew that I would hold dear the values of Christ, the values of love and compassion that he taught me. But I didn't understand that he was the bridge. He was the stairway to heaven. He was, the, he was Jacob's ladder. He was my connection to God. So... God revealed a truth to me when I first, the day I was saved, I was, it was like a computer that just uploaded so much information. I never knew, instantly knew. He showed me that I could come out to worship him and that that is akin to going to a divine wellspring that was within my soul. So every time I came out into nature and talked to him, I was going to that divine wellspring, purifying myself, giving myself serenity and peace and calmness and compassion and love. And then he showed me how I could take some back to spread his word. I called it the man with the lantern is what I was. I was there to offer a helping hand to all those in need to show them the way to God. But I kept studying and I kept studying and I was understanding religions and philosophies and spiritualities for the first time. I'd known the basics about most of them, but I kept going back to things like more Eastern uh, religions as far as the meditative aspects. And I kept going to New Age spirituality. And he revealed to me within while I was doing this, 
because he showed me blatantly that I was getting into this more. I was gravitating to that more because I didn't want to sacrifice anything in my life. I didn't want to have to change the things that I used for escape or I used for fun. I used for pleasure. So he kept showing me. And the biggest thing that, that kind of, no, not the biggest thing, but one of the things that dawned on me was when I kept, I, there was always a couple new age spirituality or just, you know, generic spirituality uh, YouTube channels that I'd watch. And they were kind of, they were really peaceful and kind of meditative, kind of like Eastern philosophies and Eastern religions. And they always talk about manifesting your reality. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You can manifest your own reality. Wow. And they were basically saying that we were God. Because God created us and God was within us, that we were God ourselves. And it didn't dawn on me till much later that that was what Adam and Eve thought too when they ate that forbidden fruit. They became their own God. They became a small G God when they first decided they weren't going to obey him. And there is a lot of power in that. There is a lot of power in becoming your own God you will probably have, if you focus it the right way, you'll probably have a lot of success in whatever you want to accomplish. But you will never, ever find the peace and the love and the pure, radiant, overwhelming understanding that love is transcending every human emotion and desire that love transcends the love you feel for your child when they're first born in fact that love for me retroactively went back and filled in the love that I felt for my children and just as Jesus went back and fulfilled the prophecies from the Old Testament. I, I didn't understand because I wasn't supposed to understand the process of doubt, the process of learning, process of understanding. It was a mission from God because God loves the big reveal. God loves when you finally, finally understand what he is showing you and it dawns on you like that eureka moment. It's similar to, it, it can't be really compared to anything in, in my regular life, but it's similar to, I guess, if you're a surfer and you've ever ridden a wave or even body surfed. Or if you've ever been an artist or writer or any kind of artist uh, and you just completely get in that zone and you feel like you're about to create your masterpiece. It's the first love and rekindled love. It's all of these things that are perfect in life, or seem perfect, rolled into one. And it still does not even come close to the love that God gives us, the love that Christ gives us. Now, I was on my journey 
So it took me some time and you can go back and watch my earliest videos and you can see how I was learning. And I, I still knew some truth. There were things that I had to find there that still are apply to me today. <laughs> I apologize for the sweat rolling down. It is literally the hottest day. I keep saying that and it keeps being true. And there is no wind at all where I'm at. There is nothing. I mean, I'll stand this way so you can see the lake behind me. There we go. But you can go back into my old videos. I haven't watched a ton of them uh, again, but I'm, I'm probably going to try to watch some of them while I'm on my, on my trip this week. I was still in the process of understanding. I was still learning what God was teaching me. It was like he threw down a million piece puzzle in front of me and said, put this together. There was no pressure. There was no urgency to it. He wanted me to do it at my own pace, but I was consuming knowledge and wisdom at a rapid pace. There were times when I'd spend eight hours or more a night just devouring every bit of information I could about God. I was going over testimonies. I was going over spiritual awakenings. I was going over everything that people were doing to connect with God and how it, how it applied to me and how it was similar to mine and how it contrasted from mine. I found that near-death experiences were the closest to what I had felt. Because they were completely transformed as I was. But still, with near-death experiences... Ooh, got a fly on me. Oh, I actually got him. We'll see if he's still alive. He's going to come back for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> the near-death experiences didn't always change somebody completely. What it did was, I, I watched one where it was a young man. He was a, I believe, a, a young teen. And he had that near-death experience. He saw the afterlife. He saw what was in store for him. And he came back. And he, like me, said he was no longer afraid of death. But he said it was actually not a great thing for him in, in a way that he took a bunch of risks that he shouldn't have taken. Because he didn't care if he lived or died. He lived to the extreme. Now, I can, I can understand that because... If I was a young man and I felt that, I probably would not be around now. I'm actually surprised I'm around right now anyway. But you have to understand that when God comes to us, there is always a process. We might think we knew God before, but he has that big reveal to us and he wants to show us in our own way in ways that sometimes only we can understand. He wants to show us his nature. Now he wants to transform us also to spread the word and lead others to, to him. But I kept going back to a, a thing. I was like, well, I still am a Christian. I still love, love Christ. I just don't know if the Christian way is what... I, I loved Christ. I wasn't, didn't call myself a Christian necessarily. But 
I wanted to know what the Christian kind of awakening was. And that's when I saw the story of Paul on the road to Damascus. And Paul was completely transformed. He went from not a broken man like me. He went from, he was broken in a different way. He wanted to kill and torture Christians to wipe them out. He thought it was just blasphemous that they even existed. So he was on his journey to wipe the Christians out and he was on the road to Damascus and he was blinded by a great light came from the sky and he asked, oh Lord, who are you? And he said, Paul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. And when you persecute my followers, you persecute me. Now he didn't give him his sight back. He said, go to Damascus and I will send someone for you. So his men took Paul to Damascus. Christ went to a man named Ananias and he told him, go to Paul, restore his vision. He will receive the Holy Spirit. And this guy's like, who? The dude who's tracking and killing us? Are you serious? <laughs> it's just like the story I did yesterday about Abraham. God said to Abraham, kill me a son. Abe said, man, you must be putting me on. He was... He was obviously a little, didn't understand, but he was not going to say no to God, to Christ. So Ananias went and he healed Paul. And Paul became maybe the most important figure in Christian history, besides Christ, obviously, in the Christian church. And so I kept thinking about the road to Damascus, even before I knew exactly what it was. So I looked it up and I, I understood that this is the transformation that I went through. I still didn't understand the Holy Spirit came into me. And it's funny about the time of Easter and probably about the time of Pentecost when the disciples first received the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit came to me. No, the Holy Spirit revealed himself in me. I recently went back and watched the day that God saved me, the video I have from it, and I have it up on my channel I'll, if I remember, if you guys remind me, I'll put a link up for it. And I could see the point in the video when the Holy Spirit came into me. I was watching as the deer walked alongside of me. And then he, she walked out into the water. And the wind, which had been kind of, you know, it had been a little light breeze, but it had mostly been calm. And then a strong wind picked up. And I, I just felt this happiness. And it built and it built within me. And by the time I walked out of the woods that day, I was completely changed. Completely. But I tell you, I did not want it to be a, I did not want it to be the Christian religion. I wanted it to be something else so badly. 
And that was for selfish reasons. For selfish reasons, I did not want to live up to that standard. I didn't want to have that scrutiny on me. I didn't want to be anything like the Christians, most of the Christians I'd seen. And I still don't want that. God showed me I don't have to be. God showed me no man is going to put restrictions on my religion. No man is going to put borders and boundaries on my religion, on my faith. Only God and his all-encompassing, omnipotent love Only that and Christ, who is God in the, in the form that we can relate to completely, only that matters to me. Now, of course, I started immersing myself more in Scripture after this dawned on me that all, all roads were leading to Christ. And so I read that scripture, and for the first time in my life, it started to have meaning, deeper meaning than this man did this. Jesus walked here and healed this man. I understood things within it. It spoke to me. It called to me. Different parts called to me. It's like right before I came here, I was, I was reading, you know, Mark chapter 9. When Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on a high mountaintop. And then his, he just started radiating this white light. His clothes were glowing. And all of a sudden, they saw Moses and Elijah up there. Two Old Testament prophets. And Jesus was talking to them, but the disciples, they were like, what? Uh, they're, they're just like hanging back, not knowing what's going on. And then uh, I think it was Peter that said, you know, hey, should I get, you know, a couple tents for, for all of us to sleep up here? And, you know, Elijah and Moses with us now. And then all of a sudden a great cloud over shadowed over them and they heard a voice saying this is my son follow him and then Moses and Elijah were gone but Elijah and Moses came to show Jesus what he would have to go through even Christ had limited himself so much a God turning himself into a man pouring his omnipotence his, a lot of his power out of him and when he did that he had the limits of a man And he had known the suffering that he was going to go through. But after they left that mountaintop that day, he, Jesus told Peter, John, and James not to speak of this until after he had risen from the dead. And they're like, okay, you know, we'll do what you say. And then he told all the disciples that he was going to die and rise again. He told them he was going to have much suffering and much contempt aimed at him. It is not a bad thing to have doubt. Sometimes God works through us, 
through our doubt. He works through our artwork. He works through others. He works through atheists' words and deeds sometimes. He works through anything because he is all-powerful. So anything that's going to affect us the most, it's going to help us understand the most, that's what God will do. And even though I didn't want it to be a... I didn't want to be a Christian. I didn't want to have that label on me. I didn't want to have labels at all. I'd always been an independent person. I just wanted to do my own thing. I wanted my own faith, my own religion. But what I want doesn't mean a thing. What I want is what got me into the mess I was already in. What I want had me miserable for 13 years of my life. What I want had me wishing for death. And what God showed me, and especially what Christ showed me, was a world where I was transformed and I could help lead others to that transformation. And then that was my purpose for living. And then it was greater than any purpose that I could ever imagine. And so I tell you all, please, I understand how important it is to read the Bible, to read the scriptures, to pray, but you have to open your heart it is like a meditation. You have to breathe in that purity and breathe out the tension and the fear and the anxiety and the guilt and the shame. You have to completely open your mind and heart to nothing else. All these troubles that you have going on are all going to bog you down and keep you from seeing the truth. The truth of Christ and the truth of his love and forgiveness. So I ask you, I understand it's in North Carolina, it's, it's way too hot to be out here. But go into a room by yourself. Go into nature when you can. Put that bug spray on, trust me. Do what you need to do away from any distractions. Don't have your friends, don't have your family, don't have your pets. Try to keep away from others as much as you can who are out hiking or something. And then open yourself to it. Imagine yourself ripping your chest wide open and opening every bit of your heart and soul to him and feel him fill all of that void within you. That's it for right now. I'm going to try to do a couple more videos today. I don't know if I'm going to make it though. I want to have some so I can keep releasing them for every day that I'm on my trip, but I'm not going to have that many. Because I sit and I talk for way too long out in the heat. and <laughs> I could only do a couple. But I love you all. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.